Here's a distinction for you. Lead by example versus lead by expertise. I actually would, took a pause when I first heard this. I, just a few hours ago, I was having a conversation with someone who was really helping me see how I can continue to build my team and to actually get someone to support me in producing my brain and making more of the activities that I see in my mind, the visions that I have come to life in the world. And what started out as a conversation of how do I find and attract people who can work with me to help produce my brain, uh, to help me with all the elements related to marketing or sales or getting different flows and funnels up in, in the business, it ended up evolving into a conversation about how I was showing up. Should I have had that support? And the question that came up was actually a big part of what I've been wrestling with recently. The elements of having a mission of bringing together a truly inclusive and empowered world, of bringing forth a different world. And wanting to also be someone that's out there helping people to bring out all of who they are and to celebrate and value themselves in a way that allows them to own their power and make their impact. So the question that like to make this, to bring this down a couple of different levels is like, I'm I'm wrestling with, do I come out here as Niyama, the person who's like, who's been on the journey? I used to be Nemo. Now I'm Niyama. Let me teach you how to do it and show up as like, here goes the five different ways to do this. Here goes the, the, the process and the, the structure. And then, you know, really just kind of put myself in a position of like, trust me, I got this. I know this. I've lived it. You want to follow me? Or do I, do I do what's real for me? Which is like, hey, I'm still figuring this out. Uh, there are elements I've, I've, I've hit a massive milestone and that massive milestone was a, was the, the signpost on the side said, going forward, Niyama, you have just left me, you have just left Nemo, you know, now entering Niyama, right? Like it's, it's almost like that was the, the point there. And with that came this, this element of, okay, well, now that I've done that, shouldn't I be showing up as like, you know, the, the one who knows it, the expert, the, the authority on all this here. And it really has been something that has been weighing on me to understand how do I, how do I show up now? How do I lead? All the people that I've seen so far that I've followed have really done it from a place of leading by expertise. They are teaching the concepts. They've already done it. They're like, look at all the different things that I've done. I'm going to teach you how to do it too. There's one person who comes to mind. His name was, uh, his name is Pat Flynn. And he called himself a crash test dummy. And he's like, this is how I've done it. Like I, like throughout building his business, he just showed what he was doing at the time. And in this conversation that I had around the dream production Someone brought up the question and she, she was like, it's a, there's a difference between leading by example and leading by expertise. And so that's where I'm going to be playing with us here. I am choosing to lead by example, but that example is not a perfect example because I don't think that perfect examples exist in this world. That example comes from stumbling. That example comes from being messy. That example comes from going for it and not getting it or probably even worse going for exactly what I thought I could get and getting that and only getting that. So we're going to, I'm, I myself, I'm going to lead by example and I'm going to slow things down here to make, to ask you a question. How do you feel like you need to show up as a leader? How do you feel like you need to show up as a trailblazer? Is it something where you feel like you need to have all the credentials, know all the right things and have everything lined up and ready to go beforehand? Or are you willing to go on the actual journey and to show people how they can navigate the difficulties that come along with choosing to make the transition and becoming the leader who really makes an impact? Are you willing to lead by example, even if, and especially because it's messy and it's not perfect? Today, we get the chance to talk to an outlier who has been a big part of my journey. He's been on a number of, uh, I don't know, like, so I'm talking to a, a Bo today, a Bo Henson, and we, 
what I want to say, what's coming to mind here is when I saw, when I saw his face, I was like, oh, we've, you've, you've been with me back when I was like, hey, I just want to have a one-on-one coaching session. Okay, great. I'll, I'll like, come on in. Then I, my first ever group coaching conversation that no one will ever see uh, because it was private for, for just that group of people. Uh, he was there too. And he's like, yeah, sign me up. I'm on. And now we're doing the coaching podcast and it's, and it's continued to grow from there. And so he's been someone who's actually seen me as I've been leading by example and going through the messiness of it all and has consistently said, yes, I'm in. So Bo, with that here, I am honored to have this opportunity to serve you uh, in this conversation. I'm going to unmute you and let's just uh, let's, let's bring you on. It's really, really great to have you here. Can I still call you Nemo? Yeah, you, you can. Let's see here. My preference is Niyama. Uh, if the Nemo comes out, like, so ne- Nemo is not who I am anymore. Um, if, it, if it comes up, we will continue to go. But my preference is definitely Niyama. Niyama it is. All right. How are you? I am fantastic. I'm feeling, I'm feeling alive. I'm feeling in my power. And I'm feeling like I'm feeling ready to serve. And I'm also feeling free. You know, talking about this leading by example versus um, leading from expertise, I think I think it's allowing me to not have to posture. You know, mm. it's allowing me to be able to come and meet you really on on a playing field where we can both grow together. To be your sherpa by the side, you know, mm. your guide by the side, the sherpa along your journey. So I'm feeling really good about that. There. Let's start off here. Then, like, let's start off with just something I think is important. We were talking a little bit beforehand and I was like, let me just hit record. Let's just get into this. The, yeah. Throughout this conversation, I'm going to invite you to be selfish, right? Selfish or self-interested. This is, a, okay. this is um, by invitation. You can say yes or no to this here, but my invitation is for you to be selfish. And the idea here is this. I want to just dedicate my, myself to supporting you today. Um, and knowing that whatever supports you, there is someone out there that like needs to hear this message needs to, and the message is not anything you and I could say, but it could be like the way that we interact together or the fact that we're just like, you know, so just without having to, having to be anything for anyone else, without having to worry about anyone else, knowing that the best thing that you can do for yourself Mm -hmm. and for others is to focus on you right now, unapologetically. Mm -hmm. I want to invite you to to join me in that part of the conversation. Are you are you good with that today? I'm good with that. I'm good with that. Okay. Awesome. There's one other thing here that I'm going to put out here, which is that I love to create a brag zone for us here, right? Yeah, okay. the brag zone. I love that face right there, right? So notice that face right there, right? I said brag zone, and all of a sudden it's like, wait, hold on, <laughs> oh. uh, and that makes sense to me, right? As outliers, we we get by by like not necessarily sticking out so far that we're no longer accepted, right? So mm-hmm. let me, let me, I wanna create this level of safety for us. I'm not interested in playing with you in an average way. I am not interested in helping you continue to make incremental steps towards something because it won't rock the boat for other people. I'm really interested in helping you get to your next level. That's, that's where, that's the game that I play. And I feel like the brag zone is incredibly important because what it does is that, well, to be in a brag zone, you're in, and you can choose to be in or not, the invitation to be in the brag zone includes this. You cannot get too messy in this space. You cannot get too big in this space. Like okay. you don't have to worry about coming off arrogant or cocky to me. Mm-hmm. Like you're humi- you can put humility to the side. In fact, it would be even more humble to own what it is that you do because that to me says that you know that there's more that you can be doing out in the world. It's a lack of humility to not own it. All right. So if that if that's helpful, <clears throat> more humble by not being humble. Play with that one for a while. All right. Duly noted. All right. Cool. Are you willing to step into that? Are you willing to to um to be un to be comfortable being uncomfortable within the the brag zone? I will invite the opportunity to do so. Okay. Let's see where it goes from there. All right. Cool. That sounds good. I, I, I can work with that. I, but I did want to give us an opportunity. I did want to let you know. And at any point, you can just say it. You can just be like, in the effort of being in the brag zone, boom. You know? Okay. Awesome. All right. Cool. So let's let's just, let's just start off there. Like, we're going to be talking a lot about, like, what's going on in your life uh, okay. and, and what you're trying to, to accomplish. Uh, okay. We're really focused on coaching you today. I love to give people a chance to get to to know you. 
Um, <laughs> is that really what I want to do? Let me just check in on that. What I like to do is this. I love to get a little bit like, just tell me a little bit more about your journey right now, right? Um, and what I'm curious about is kind of like the outer journey. What is it that other people like? What is it that other people have already seen about you? Like they might think like, oh, he does this job. He's done this. Like on the outside, they see all this. And maybe even mm -hmm. on the outside, this is where I'm trying to head. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm really curious about that to start out with. And then we'll go deeper afterwards. But I want to give some room for some of what do people see at the surface when, okay. they, when, when, when they see you. Okay. So, so on the surface, they see a fairly passionate project engineer, or at least we could, the official title is project engineer, but I'm more of a program manager. And um, it, my, my current task is to make sure that I see the development of a certain component that will go into a future vehicle later. See that component from, the, from its inception to its validation to its approval for mass production. The passion comes in, it, it seems like a very simple job. Make sure the project gets from point A to point B. You come across hills and valleys and how do you navigate through those things. And, every, and even though every project pretty much has the same start and end goal, how you get there might change depending on what kind of challenges you run into. And as much as, as I've been told that it's been done before, for someone like me in, in, in this situation, everything's brand new. And there are moments in time where everyone's sitting around and it seems brand new to everyone else where a simple question is, how do you do this? And everyone's looking at each other like, what do you mean, how do we do this? We just did this. No, there's a process in, in which it has to get done. There's a process that it has to get done. I didn't know there's a process that it has to get done. Those guys just said that it just happened the way it happened. And so the passion there is, what should I have done? It's what can we do better? What should I have done better? Shucks, then, and, and as, as, what will well be the best way to put it. I mean, everyone tells you to look forward, but I'm someone who looks back. I, in some sense, it's almost an engineer perspective or an, a scientist perspective. Why did it fail the last time? And so look at why it failed the last time and see I can do better. And then from doing better, from learning from the past, you can help inform the future sort of. And so in that perspective, it's almost like I'm missing the present. And so that's where the passion comes from, where it seems as if I'm always constantly missing the present. And so it, it shows up in some level of passion of it has to get done or those situations where I can't tell you why it's going to happen in the future, but trust me on this one. But again, if you're an engineer, it's why should I trust you? You've got to have about A, B, C, D, E, F with footnotes and um, is it the AMA way of, of doing um, 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 references in the back of your paper? Something like that. So that's what they see on the outside. And on the inside, it's, I am scared because I don't know what I'm doing. And they tell you, I've told, I've heard this from several people that, you know, everyone, everyone, it, it wouldn't be, what, what is it? It, it? it wouldn't be a journey if you knew where you were going, something like that. It, it, it's anyone who gets, I mean, they promote people, but we, even the people who are like CEOs and stuff, they don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. That's why they put them in that position. It's not so much what you know, it's about what you can do and such. And so as you, it's words coming out of my mouth, it's like, I can, I'm telling you what people have told me. I'm telling you what I know, but what I feel is something entirely different. So that's the inner journey. And so the inner journey is now freak out less and let things go. But while you're letting things go, you still have a little bit of steering in, in, into where it's going, if, if that makes sense. It does. Um, at least, at least to me, I, I, I want to do two things. First, I just want to just take a deep breath with you right now. Just like, <laughs> hmm. Let's slow, let's slow things down a little bit. Sure. I, it does mean it, it, it does actually, I, I get that. Like the, I'm entering into February and every February I put on a theme and the theme, okay. uh, f theme of February is fearless February. And the major distinction there is the, dif the difference between fearless and fear less. less. Yeah. And the idea here being like, I actually, I actually like, I used to think that I needed to be fearless in order to do anything. I used to think that the people that I was looking at, the leaders out there who are leading from their expertise out there, they were, they were fearless. They've done it before. I know it. It's definitely this. Uh, and that's the way that they were projecting. Um, yeah. 
And nowadays, and so like, I thought that's what I was trying to get. I thought I was trying to eliminate the fear from my life, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting, like, as I've been going through this journey of really choosing to to lead something and, and to and to bring and to go create a movement with others, there's been this element of when I don't feel fear, typically it's something that I'm doing something that's not important. When I don't feel fear, I'm not growing. I'm repeating the past, not learning from the past. Right. And there's a difference there. Cause I think I, cause what I'm hearing from you is like, like you, like you enter situations and you're like, how can we learn from what just happened? How can we learn from other things that have happened? And because you do this year, you are able to actually see the future because you've seen how, how actually a lot of these things line up with things that have happened in the past. You've taken that yes. time. Am, am I, am I a little bit, am I any part of you're that? You're at, yeah. You're definitely on on that path. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, so there's an element here of like, a part of me is like, I'm happy that you're scared because it means there's, there's elements that are still growing for you. If, if I am not, if I'm not feeling the fear, then I am probably not growing. I'm probably not putting myself in, in a place of challenge. Uh, and the idea here is my journey has come is constantly. I'm, I'm, I'm a fearful person. I am, mm-hmm. I am riddled with anxiety. My first six minutes of waking up in the morning is like, just like all the things that I've yet to do, all the things I haven't done. I have to actually go through like a priming exercise to get okay. that ready for me, like to be able to show up. So mm-hmm. the idea here of being able to be scared, but like to also be able to fear less along the way really comes to mind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Have you ever taken, um, there's a, this Gallup has an assessment called the strength finders. Have you ever taken that? I did. It was what, six years ago now. Okay. All right. Without going like into it all, like I don't need you to remember what your, your strengths are. Um, you know, if the, the premise of it is that they, they, they've, they've, cal- they've curated like 34 different strengths that they've seen through the millions of people who've taken the test. Uh, and there's like a top five and like your top five, like play out for you. Yeah. Good. I do not remember any of them. There's that's, only that's one, right. there's only one. So in, in the whole process, they, they, there was something interesting that they made us do. And that was like, you, you get a partner and it's like, you kind of lock knuckles to each other and you push and both of you are supposed to pu- push against each other. And it's something that came out of the personality where it's like, there's some who, I guess they become more type A if they like really get aggressive and push. And there are some who they'll let you push back. And it's like one extreme is you push all the way forward. And the other extreme is like, you let someone push you all the way forward all the way back. And in my case, it was, yeah, you can push, you can push, but at some point I'm going to stop and I'm going to hold steady. Mm-hmm. And so from that end, it, 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 it related to a certain number of strengths where it's, I hear you, I see you, I understand you, but at some point I'm probably going to stop you and say, either you've gone down the wrong path or this is not the way it really is supposed to be done. But I, I like to give you a little bit of leeway from that perspective. That was the main thing that stuck with me when I went through that strength finders exercise. That's interesting. Like that's that's cool how, how it was all facilitated there. And I'm glad that you know you know some of your strengths. There was an element that of what you were talking about there. Um I'll I'll be really curious to see how that's like push pull or like not, not even push pull. It's like like uh leeway, okay, firm, like kind of yeah. comes comes into play. Uh yeah. when you were talking about it, they have they have one of their strengths that they call they call it restorative. Uh okay. and it's the ability, it's it's the strength of being able to use the past in order mm-hmm. to like uh, is it, it's, it's not restorative, actually. It's context. Uh, it's the ability to look at the the past and be able to like use that to be able to create um, what's it called to to be able to use that to navigate the future or the present right now. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. So uh, it just it seems like 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 that's just that's just how you get you get things done. And I so let, let me let me I I can go on and so my thing here right mm-hmm. what you don't know about me is that. One of my skills is that I'm able to hear something that someone says and actually mm-hmm. break out the various pieces of the process. Like I'm like, oh, okay, there's this, there's this. Okay, in order mm-hmm. for that to have happened, this is what where it came in. So I get, mm-hmm. I get how like you like being able to say yes, it got done. How like how did it get done? So we can do that on purpose this time, or mm-hmm. to do it like more efficiently. I can see how that all kind of comes into play. Mm-hmm. Let's just let's jump in here. Let's like, I think that there's an element here as of just having fun here, right? Okay. So I would be curious for you. You accepted this invitation uh, okay. for a reason, right? Mm-hmm. What would we need to talk about today for you to just feel that you're the rest, the rest of this year 
is on an accelerated path? I didn't have a goal in mind. In my case, it was, it just, in my case, it was come in for whatever and be ready to leave us something. So at the end of this, it's who knows where we could go with this. But as in, in, in all of our previous meetings, it's always I've left with something that a little nugget of information I've been able to carry with me forward. So nice. that's what I'm he here to do. Nice. Awesome. So let's like, like, I also don't have any specific place that we need to get to. Let's just have a conversation then. All right. All right, then. All right, cool. Um, what's one thing that you've been like really looking to create? recently that you're like, I just haven't had the time for, or like that it'd be really cool for this to, to get done, but I really don't necessarily know how we get it done. In some, hmm, something I would like to create. All right, let's, let's pull this one. It's more of a side thing, not really related, related to the career or anything. My, my physician, my, primary care physician, he recommended a cookbook to me. Well, he recommended a book about foods and the better kinds of foods you should eat. And there was a book and there was the cookbook. And I went straight and bought the cookbook. And unfortunately, it's been gathering dust. And one thing I've t I told myself, I'll do this last year, and it never quite happened. And I told myself, I'll do it this year. And right. And, and while I started this process of kind of fixing myself a little bit in, in terms of, um, um, getting my putting more exercise and stuff but then it's like it's not just exercise it's also dieting as well and so one of the things that i've told myself i need to do is to finally get that cookbook open open look through some recipes go get the actual ingredients probably have to go to whole foods because it's that kind of a book make something happen and and i keep telling myself that it's going to be the process that i enjoy it's not necessarily getting to the end product it doesn't have to look as pretty as it does in the book but it's being able to actually make make something that is incredibly healthy according to the, the literature I've read. That's one thing that's been nagging in my mind. Yeah. Let me ask you what, like, I, I, where else in your life is there something that like, you're like, I've been really wanting to do. And I know I just need to go and create this. I know that's as simple as maybe getting the ingredients or whatever it mm -hmm. is, but where else is there something else in, in your life where it's, it's, it's been on the back burner, but it might be year two or three of it's still not happening. Ooh, okay. I guess that then we're gonna talk about this. So the three times that we started this conversation our conversations, it's always been I want to be a data scientist. Mm -hmm. Always wanted to be a data scientist. What I've been doing, I've been looking at articles, I've seen one or two YouTube videos, I've taken a couple of courses here and there. And that's where it stops. I most recently finished a class, which I look back and I realized it took took me a year to finish. But in finishing that class and getting a certificate, it doesn't satisfy the one thing that I've known I've had to do, and that is actually put that put that ability to work. Actually, get some like a random either go on Kaggle one or or find an actual project and sink my teeth into it. That it, it's been part. I would start something, realize I'm missing a lot of detail. Maybe I need to go find something. Or like in this case where I said I took a class for it, it was actually supposed to be a, what, a four-month class. It took me a year because every time I started, I probably want to write one line of code and I get stuck on it. And then from being stuck on it, it's the massive anxiety that comes through of, are you ever going to finish it? You're never going to be able to get to it. Well, now they're talking about it's going to automate itself and you probably will be out of it. You won't be able to have a job once you even get into, if you were to ever get into the position either. Why would you find something at work that you can apply this to? Well, I could, but the thing is right now, in my case, it's project management. I'm looking at the different component. In my case, it's, it's, it's like, I don't find things that I can directly apply myself into. And so it's been a nagging semi hobby of sorts of which, um, even some other friend of mine said, you've been talking about this for a year. And it's like, the, you're saying the same things that you said this year that you said last year. What are you really doing with it? And I remember thinking, gosh, I've been all talking, no action. That's where I've been. It's, that's where I've been at. Fortunately, right now at my job too, there are new things picking up. And I'm trying to take more responsibility. So that nagging feeling isn't as strong as before. But to think about things that I've started but I haven't finished, that 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 would be one of the the higher level things. Let me ask you in this conversation, would it be meaningful to talk 
talk about that? Is there something else that'd be more meaningful to talk about? Like, I'm happy. Well, to- let's let's talk about that. That I mean, it's one thing. If it's something that we've been talking about for a few years now, and it, again, it's I'm still pretty much a square one where I started from. So yeah. Yeah, I mean, like I mean, you've taken the course since then. You've done you've done various things. As much as you say you're at square one, you're actually at a different square than when when we when we met. Maybe you wanted to be at square a thousand, or you want to leave the the world of squares altogether. You're like I'm at triangle right. three, you know. But um, but like but like there, there's been progress made. There's a couple of questions that come to mind here, and the idea here is like while while we explore this here, notice mm-hmm. that we went from a cookbook to like where your career is at it, like, you know? Yeah. Uh, and the idea here being like, are there different things that we're, are we seeing the same patterns show up for us in different areas mm-hmm. in our lives that are mm-hmm. that are continuously um, coming back in here? Who knows? And this is gonna sound really, really interesting, but let's use the cookbook first to come and okay. then come back to, the, to this here, sure. All right? Sure. If you're going to make one meal, but it's just it's a quick invitation. The invitation sure. is to make one meal mm-hmm. in the next week. Okay. That's it. Like it's, okay. it's not, it's not about to use the cookbook. Like you can pick one meal from the cookbook by mm-hmm. one set of ingredients. It doesn't matter. Like you might end up throwing away money because you're buying ingredients that you'll never use again, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. but like to make one meal from that, that cookbook this, in the next week, are you open to that invitation? One second, you just you you. I just lost the audio with you here, so let me just check real quick. Um, okay. Okay, I can hear you now. Go ahead. Are you ready? Yeah. And within the next week. Within the next week. Within the next week. Pause. <laughs> Pause. Really quickly. All right. I don't care whether or not you make the meal. I'm not. I'm not close enough to eat it, so I'm joking. <laughs> but. Right there, right? What were you thinking through? What, what what was going on through your mind right there? Like, what was going on in your body when I said, in the next week? Like, what what was going what on? Am I, basically, what, was, what am I going to be doing that whole week? Starting mapping it out. So you're going to get home Monday. I, Monday, I'm not going to be, I'm going, I'm going to be out of town. Tuesday, you're without probably, Without going into all that there, well, I'm hearing sure. from you really quick, like, because I'm going to bottom line a little bit of this year. But it's like you're, hesitation, you're, like things going to get in the way of things, and it's like, I it, it, will, will I find the time, basically? Yeah. So okay. So this. So what? I, so that's awesome. So I'm hearing, will I find the time? Uh, you're having hesitation. There's a feasibility element. You went to like, you know, it's as simple as like a meal and going to a, like, you know, you know all the different steps. You're like, I know what to get. You're like the ingredients are there. Actually, this is a cookbook that I need to go to Whole Foods. So even like, I can just go go to that. What are you? what are you creating as the steps that you need to do? What are all the things that like, instead of just saying like tomorrow, I'm going to go for 15 minutes during lunch to whole mm-hmm. foods and just like spend a 15 minutes there buying the ingredients. So I at least have it in the house here. You've created something else. So like th- there's something else that's going on. So t- tell me about like, what, what were you creating in your mind? What does this, what does this feel like to you? The things in the way, what are those things in the way and what can I push aside to get it get it to get to that point okay and and i know you're a project you're a project manager so there so there are like dependencies and you know there there there, there are steps that things needed to get through and yes. just for the sake of this conversation without having to be in project management mode so so much right okay. um okay. Are there times, let me ask this question. Are there times where there are things in the way where you have things that need to get done and you like, you've had commitments and all that. And then something's come up, right. Where Mm -hmm. you've actually just made it happen. There are times like that. Yeah. Tell tell me about, tell me about one of those times, especially because you're really good at, uh, what is it? You're really good at asking the process. Like, you know, it's like, how, how did that happen? I'm going to, I'm going to, if, if you, if you don't mind, I'm going to try and do my best to bring your superpower back to you. Uh, you know, the engineer that's like, Oh, we just did it. You know how? So let's, so let's, let's play that game with you right now. Pick one time in particular and don't, don't worry about right now having to explain how it happened. Tell me about that part. Tell me about that time right now. Just, just let me know what happened. I mean, the only thing that comes to mind was when I had to do laundry and I only had 48 hours to do it because I had to take off for a flight. Okay. And it was, I could What did you, what, did you, what else did you have going on at that time? That's, and I don't, 
and I don't remember really remember what I had going on at the time. I was probably it's probably my work laptop open trying to get some things done. But it was one of those if I was going to do laundry, the amount of laundry I had to do was probably going to take about two or three hours out of out of out of, out of the day. Mm -hmm. And of course, from a certain perspective, it's not like I couldn't multitask and do laundry. I pref in my case, I prefer to go to a laundromat because then it's like I, I'm able to do loads quicker and stuff like that. But nonetheless, it was I can already envision the time commitment. It's going to be me having to break away from what I'm doing, even though there wasn't much of a flow, but it's having to get away from it in order to get it done. And so in, in sometimes the situation, if it keeps nagging my mind, it's all right, I'm just going to go up and get it, get it done and and we'll let whatever happen, flow after that happens. Okay, so tell me about tell me about that really quickly, right? The elements of like I'm just gonna go get this done, and then we'll let everything else, whatever happens after that, happen. Like like staying within to the extent that you can remember the laundry situation, uh, but like if not, we can leave that in particular. Tell me a little well, bit about that. Well, it was I have to do laundry. I have to do. I'm telling myself I have to do laundry. I'm probably like I'm the kind of person who sometimes if I have too many thoughts going on, I'm gonna write it down just to get it out of my mind. And at some point, I'm repeating the words laundry, laundry, laundry. It looked like I was. Like, I, I was losing my mind a little bit. And at some point I'm looking at what I'm writing and I'm looking at, I'm hearing what I'm saying. It's, and I'm looking at the laundry too. And it's, okay, you know what? I, whatever, get the keys, get the jacket, go out, go to the laundry. So it was, it, it, it's, it was the anxiety building up, building up, building up. And then at some point getting tired of the anxiety building up, go take care of it. And then hopefully that that either, either everything will calm down or you find something new to worry about. Cool. So let me ask you then, like, it, like if I'm hearing, like, there's a lot of different ways we can take this here. Sure. Uh, I'm going to go down this this particular rabbit hole, but like, we could go down another place altogether, right? Sure. Then what if, like, what if it was all right then for things to just keep building up? Like, like, let me ask you: Do you enjoy the anxiety? Is it fun to have the anxiety? Oh, no. I, but like, no. like, well, like, if, if it was, if you were being really real about it, like. Let me ask you what what is what does the the anxiety building up give you that because you could have taken care of it at any point apparently but you know so what 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 is what is the gift that anxiety building up gives you? In so, or if you if we're going to try and spin it into what is the gift that it gives you, then it's like it's this burst of energy. It's 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 it allows you to be more spontaneous. So in some sense, it almost lets you be a lot more risk risk taking. Oddly to talk about that with laundry, but yeah, it's like that build up, that build up. It's all right. You know what? You know what? Let's do it, do it. And then sometimes it happens, and it's all right. It got done. We can breathe now. And other times it's it happened. You kind of wish it didn't happen, but it happened anyway. So but yeah, at least I'm not. At I, least I'm not panicking. But yeah, cool. I like and the, the, it, it's this element of you might see me sometimes like interrupt when I'm like I think you got it. Right. Sure. So, so um, just for today, I'm playing something differently. I'm, I'm seeing myself differently and saying like, I'm coaching differently myself. So um, sure. it's uncomfortable for me to interrupt. And that's part of why I'm doing it. Um, no what's the risk that, what's the risk that you need to be taking right now? If, and, and take your time on this one, unless it comes, unless it comes immediately to you, like ask your, like check in with your gut. What's the risk that like, that like you wish you were taking that right now mm -hmm. you don't, you don't feel like you can. And that will be something really related to work. So we've been we've been trying to get this kind of um, well, we've been wanting to build a database of the products we do, and then also build a competitor database of 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 all the other similar products that we work on. And one of the every it's it's a problem with all of us because we all have bigger projects in mind and such. And and because this is one of those, we'll build a library and we'll set it aside. It kind of doesn't get the attention that it needs. Well, occasionally I'll be sitting around at my desk and um, as I'm getting through stuff, I think to myself, I mean, I still have tabs open from like four or five months ago about these research articles that I need to put into, in, into a digestible form for the rest of the team to look at. And I'm at a point right now where it's, people have said they've wanted to do it. I feel that I have, I have the, it's, the anxiety is weighing on me to get it done. So at some point I'm going to have to take the reins and get it done in terms of, is it risky? Not necessarily, because in the end, it helps the company. It helps the company. It will help the company in the long term. But in terms of 
you're going to have to really dedicate to it. And not only dedicate, but now you're going to have to pull a team together. You're going to have to get the subject matter experts actually getting down and dirty into what, what is necessary. You're going to have to start building out the budget. These are the things you need to go get. These are the things you need to go purchase. These are the, this is the kind of services we need to go look into. Put it all together. Be either put it on paper or gather, put everyone into a meeting. How do you, oh, of course. And some of the side anxieties. You get, you get a lot of these people into a meeting. Everyone knows what they know, and they're going to spend about a half hour talking about possible random things that they could be doing. But I'm the kind of person where I need to be in and out of a meeting in 15 minutes because after 15 minutes, I'm, not, I'm, I'm zoned out. I'm not, I'm not thinking about anything much. I'm probably worrying about the next thing I've got to go worry about. So now it's not only do I have to put this together, but I got to do this in a manner that it makes me continuously feel productive or it makes me continuously feel like I'm moving in a direction that I'm moving into. I'm not getting bogged down. I'm not feeling like this is a waste of time. I'm not feeling like I could be doing other things because this thing that I'm thinking about doing that we've been talking about forever is a necessary thing that will have definitely add value to the company later on. I could feel that right there. I could feel, I could feel like, I could feel all that, you know, like how, like when you just said all that right now, what's going on in your body real quick? I gotta go do it right now. I gotta go do it. I gotta go. Yeah. 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 The part of me that wants to go down there and let, go down that path with you. Right okay. Now. But there's, there's, and there's, there's, I can see how that has served you up until this point. Right. I can see how okay. like you've had a successful career so far. You've continued to get promoted. You've been able to do everything. Um, and it just seems like, 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 like part of what allows you to get things done is like all the different things that you have to get done and the anxiety that builds up around it. And that's, that's how it's able to propel you to move forward. Mm -hmm. What if there was a different way of being productive without having to have the anxiety be the trigger for it? there probably is a different way i've been told there's a different way but at some point you default to what is the main thing that drive well drives you is the weird way to put it but in the end it's like anxiety is a big motivator fear is a big motivator yeah that's, that's why like, people say they're trying to get rid of the fear i'm like what are you doing <laughs> you know like like how how can you how can you be with it the the sure. the element though is you just said the word driving and I'd be kind of mm -hmm. curious about like whether I have this, this image of like a bus with all my different emotions in it. Uh, mm -hmm. And there's like, and I can tell sometimes when fear is driving the bus or mm -hmm. when joy is driving the bus or when anger is driving the bus, you know, you, you get where I'm coming from on this here. Yeah. The times where I've been most successful though, I've been when Niyama is driving the bus and all my emotions can stay on the bus, but they're like, mm -hmm. no one's in, in the front the front pad, panel right now, you know? Okay. And so there's an element here of I'm gonna, of, of what would it be like if a boat was just driving a bus here and didn't and didn't need didn't need anxiety to be the reason why he does something like you know so I'm gonna, like I don't know if you can answer that question head on I think that's just a question to like like let live within you for a little bit right I don't think that's a question that, that you need to come and answer just be intellectual anyway I don't think you know the answer right now. Because if you didn't okay. know the answer, I might do something different. Yeah, I probably would do something different. And honestly, it's you ever been in a situation where you've let something drive you for so long that one time when it's like you don't have that drive anymore, you're you're like, what am I doing with myself? Yeah, no, I all the time, and that's like there's, there's a reason why like like we're having this part of the, like we're in this part of the conversation, right? Because there's there's yeah. for me, it's not it's not that anxiety is a bad thing or or anything like that. It's just it's what I'm hearing from you is that it's um, I, I, I'm wondering if you have range, right? If you have, if you have the, if you have, the, yeah, yeah. What's coming up there as a, <laughs> what's making you laugh? If I have range, all, no, it's anxiety and it's, it's, it's anxiety or nothing. It's like, it, yeah, it's an on and off switch. Yeah. If I'm not being driven by, by this, then I'm probably taking a nap or it's, I'm just numb basically. Yeah. Yeah, and there's, there's, oh, yeah, there's, I, I can get it. Like this, like, like, you said numb, right? 
there's something that was coming up to me when it came to anxiety. I'll come back to you. If, I, if, it, if it comes back to mind, I'll, I'll send you a message about this afterwards. Uh, or if sure. up, I'll bring it up. But there's this element here of like, right now you have anxiety as, as the tool to help you get things, things done. And the problem, I can see a challenge with that being that as long as things are comfortable enough, there's no real change that's going to happen. All right. It's like, sure. it's, it's like, it, 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 let, let me know because sure is not a word that I can really do very much with. Uh, okay. Yes or no works well for me, but sure is like I'm I like I, I can't tell what what's happening there. So like I see where you're coming from, and and I I see where you're coming from. I agree with where you're coming from. It might be processed differently in my mind. Cool. So I'll go back to the question that you didn't answer, which is what's the risk that you're afraid of taking right now? What's, Right. I'll, I'll, at the moment, is the benchmark study that comes to mind. Getting that started and going, and but you yourself said that wasn't a, a risk. You like, like, well, like, it's not... and, and I want, I want to call that out there, right? Because I asked okay. you that question. The benchmark study came came to mind, right? Mm -hmm. And you, then you talked about it. and You said, well, it's not really that it's risky. It's just that like it's like the high anxiety right now. And so like mm -hmm. like we like we went right back into your normal pattern, mm -hmm. right? And so yeah. like so part of this here is like I could go in and play with that. I'm like, oh, okay, if that's the benchmark study, let's go with it. But I think mm -hmm. I think there's an element here of like of helping you to extend that range potentially even in this conversation, right? To the okay. standpoint of like, look, you want to create that dinner. Like, yeah. like, why aren't you acting on it? What can help you move there? The same thing with like, is like, are you, the data science, scientist stuff, right? It's like, there's so mm. many different things like that you want to get done there, but the anxiety mm. hasn't come on, on the list. And what I'm, and mm -hmm. what is really interesting is that you are, as, as you were saying, as you were talking earlier, I was like, oh, he's a professional warrior. Like <sighs> you get paid to worry. You know, what about this? What is, how does this get done? This needs to get done here. What about this? Like, it's really, it's, it's, it's what you get paid to do. You're pretty good at it, you know? Yeah. And a part of me like, is like wonders, like, what if you, what if that didn't have to be your default for everything that you do? It's like, mm -hmm. or in like outside of that, that environment, I get it. When you're working on a project, great. Sometimes it's just as simple as I'm going to go to the laundromat and wash some clothes. So. Yeah. I hear the question, and yet I still can't get myself to 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 get to what I guess the essence of what's that thing, what's that? I'm not, I, I, I'm also I'm not, to be honest, I'm kind of baffled by the question, even though I hear what you're saying. I'm still kind of baffled by the question. In what way? And like, here goes the thing: it may not be relevant for you. And if that's the case, like I said, like I'm on a task, like I'm good with with going somewhere else. Uh, I don't need to <laughs> force anything in there, like. The, at the very least, if I can put a shine a light on it, and you're like, mm -hmm. "Yeah, I'd rather keep it as it is," then that's fine. That's 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 a choice that you're making. As long as you're in choice, that's what I care about. Okay, so in that case, it's it, maybe I keep taking from a risk thing to more of things that are causing me anxiety. The thing, what do I want to just get off my plate? I guess I'm. A, it's like almost anxiety and risk are hand in hand, even though they don't seem that way on paper. Mm, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that um like I, I think for me it's it's one of those things where I'm like I don't want to I have the tendency to, to choose to go and, and say like let's go for life changing, right? Right. Um and there's elements in here of how do I say it? There's a there's there's a certain tool that you've been using, which is anxiety, right? Mm -hmm. Where mm -hmm. I'm just curious here. Right, because okay. given some of the conversations gone, what opens up for you if you mm -hmm. if you are able to continue to take action on the things you want? The cookbook to me is just representative of like this is something you want to do, but you're not, mm -hmm. or maybe you don't want to do it. Data science is a representative of something you want to do, or maybe you mm -hmm. don't want to do it. Like if you mm -hmm. really, really wanted to do it, maybe there'll be anxiety that's growing up around it. All that. What comes to mind when I say that? The it what comes to mind is that, so what is that deep thing that I've always wanted to do that I've always, it's always been in the back of my mind and I have to step outside of myself in order to get it done. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's where you're going. And interestingly enough, I've, 
I don't have that answer. I've never, I've, I've, I've come, and this has come from some of the conversations I've had with you, where I'm still, I'm still searching for that answer. And the only way I've been able to somewhat get closer to the answer is by putting myself out there, um, um, either joining a new network or, or getting, or stepping outside. Like I see a, an event, it, there's a lot of people there. I'm introverted, but you know, just take a moment to step outside. And so from that point, that's what's like. I, I remember a conversation from a while ago. One of the things I had, I targeted for my year was be less introverted. Start getting to know more people. Start getting to explore what's happening outside of me and such. And from that end, yeah, I've I've actually succeeded pretty well in that. Um, I've joined a few meetups, and, and and specifically, I'm there's a there's this group chat about people in technology and and all, and so it's like it's just a bunch of people talking. I'm starting to make new connections. I'm starting to see what else is out there. Starting to learn new ways in which I can even improve on my own job as well. And so from that perspective, ridding myself of that. Well, not ridding myself, but trying to to step outside the bounds of introversion. That's been a big goal that I've been accomplishing over the past few, uh, few uh, couple of years. Awesome. And there's like, look, I'll, I'll be honest. My one of the things I've learned is like, like introversion is an incredible skill. Like, I actually think that I have been learning that I'm having a one on one conversation with you right now. Okay. Right. And like that to mm-hmm. me, to me, I feel like I'm borrowing the power of the introvert to have like a deep one-on-one conversation and listen intently and to hear what is not being said and to have a vulnerable, like, like I used to be a kind of person who would have a ton of different uh, people around me, but I couldn't get deep at all because my, like I need to go be around so many people and I was always jumping out there. So there's a lot of power in, in what you have already. Like it, it, it might be interesting to, to continue leaning into that. And, and from a standpoint of saying like, well, I well, I like having one-on-one conversations, and I do want to like like be out, like continue to get to know people too. Maybe it's at a networking event, great, or maybe it's me like just reaching out to one person who I think is really interesting. Maybe they're in mm-hmm. data science, maybe they're in something else, whatever it is. But like mm-hmm. having the kinds of like having a good conversation with someone without having to put yourself into that that environment. There's an element of what. So I, I guess all all I'm saying here is like I think that. Um, I think introverts introverts get um, a bad rap sometimes around, and they're like they're like I have to go out and do all these extroverted things, and it's like yeah. maybe maybe not, um, like because I, I like again I I, I'm, I am I'm able to record this I think be more easily because I'm used to being seen, uh, and that's mm-hmm. my extroversion coming in there. Mm-hmm. But I'm like I'm mm-hmm. taking this approach in a in a way that works for me, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. I think I, I think there's that element here that is. That does really sit in here, like, and, and it's not that you need to have like a great purpose in the world in order to be anything like that. It's just there's mm-hmm. there's, but there's what I'm hearing is when you do have, there is that question that's still that's still open. I'm gonna leave you with a question to kind of think about okay. that as we end today's conversation, um, okay. because like I get it. In fact, I, I was just, I'm, I'm a part of a mastermind and there's someone I know who's just like incredible at some of the things that, that she's doing and bringing out in the world. But it came back to the same thing. It's like, honestly, I just not necessarily sure what my why is, what my purpose is. Do I even have one? Do I need to have one? So on and right. so forth. Right. 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 I'm going to like, I'm going to ask a question that's in line with the type of, of work that I do. Um, okay. And just let me know, you don't have to answer it right now. Just let it like kind of sit there, but it's like, the answer, the, the question here is like, it's the Peter Thiel question, right? So he, he talked about it in zero to one, right? And he okay. uses it to, to interview people to come into his com- his, um, his companies. He's, the, he's behind like PayPal and other uh, yeah. companies, right? Yeah. His question is, it's his unconventional truth. It's, okay. What is one thing that you know to be true that few others would agree with you on. That's okay. one thing that you know to be true that few others would agree with you on. And I would just like, the idea here is, I, w- I want to leave you with that question as something to just be, to, to play with, is to have in, in the back of your mind to see what's, what that stirs up for you as you, as you get more awareness on that. But I actually okay. think what will probably be the most powerful powerful for you is to like you talked about the process, 
you said like you're a process person you do things things get done then you come back and you and you like are able to take that data and break it down into what needs to get done right what yeah. it feels like for me is that like right now the way that it, is it is the anxiety the way that you presented it uh yeah. and the anxiety from the standpoint of like you know you are an amazing project manager you can see all the various steps and you can break down like you can break down all the the steps and the dependencies, the contingencies, the risks and all that stuff that's involved in it. It's like what you're supposed to do as an amazing mm -hmm. project manager. And sometimes mm -hmm. like that keeps you from just being able to like go from like, to just make the jump. It's almost like, like you can take the number one and divide it in half infinite, infinite times. Mm -hmm. And, and like, you know, that, that parable, but like that, that, that paradox riddle of like, how can you ever take that first step if you always have to go half the distance, right? When I hear yeah. when I hear you talk about these things here, you have a lot of there's a lot of half the distance going on, okay. you know, and yeah. it's like yeah, you can think about I have to go half half. Are you familiar with the half the distance riddle? Yeah, they, it's yeah. In my case, it was from a mathematical perspective. Exactly. If you keep keep dividing it by half, do you actually go through the door? Do you actually hit zero or not? Exactly. Right. So the 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 thing is, yeah, because you went through the door, right? So the yeah. so like so I the, I I would almost like look through. This is this is the, the invitation I would have for you. It's like like when you find yourself when the when the when the when you find yourself in that place where you keep going down. Like here goes all the various things that need to happen right now. My my inclination is you probably just don't have the data that you're looking for in order to be able to create what that process is, right? Mm -hmm. So instead, just like like my invitation, is just remind, just say the words half the distance, right? Mm -hmm. Knowing meaning that like that represents regardless of if you have to go all those half distances and what the like you can also just walk through the door, you know, okay. and let that like, like, let that be like a way of just, I think just taking on a few more things for you to get more information of what it is. Cause it almost feels like right now, the anxiety is keeping you where you are and you're not able to get the data that you need to be able to figure out what it is that you actually do want such that you're okay. like, Oh crap, this, like, I just need to get this done. Like I can't not do it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a great mm -hmm. thing. I like, like I'm, I'm in my mind, I'm like, wow, what's the thing that's going to make him anxious enough that he'll actually make a change right now. It's not mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. or it doesn't seem to have presented itself just yet. And that's okay. Agreed. That's okay too. And so, mm -hmm. so why don't we, why don't we leave it at, at that for, for now? I'm not okay. like, it doesn't need to be wrapped up in a nice bow It may or may not land. That's okay. I'm okay with leaving you with some things to kind of continue to think through or to continue okay. to live into uh i really acknowledge you for being a part of this journey here to like go through at the end of the end of the day it's messiness leading by example choose is like are you willing to lead through like through the messiness or are you choosing to like lead through everything's like i have everything perfectly aligned i see how you're paid to have everything perfectly aligned and i think the invitation is are you willing to to do to start looking into what it might what might it be like to live through the messiness as well mm -hmm. All right. So we'll end up, we'll end off here. Thank you, Abo. I, 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 it's an honor to serve you here today. Uh, keep me in the loop as to how things develop and I'm looking forward to continuing this journey with you. Will do. Thank you, Niamh.